Our universe is a vast expanse of death and destruction. All of the stars are destined to die, but not all at once. There's not going to be one particular point where all the lights turn off at the same time. It's more like a power outage where different grids go off at different times uh, until like there's the one last light bulb that'll just go off. This is because stars come in different sizes. The way a star dies has everything to do with the amount of mass it started life with. It carries that all the way through its lifetime. The sun is a medium-sized star, living a stable existence for billions of years. Giant stars are different. They live fast and die young. A star like the sun, which is a medium-sized star, it lives about 10 billion years. The really massive stars, they live maybe 10 million years. Massive stars can be tens or even hundreds of times more massive than the sun. When it comes to lifespan, that's a problem. A massive star has more fuel to burn in a nuclear sense. So you might naively think that it lasts longer but it's the exact opposite. Massive stars can only access hydrogen fuel in their core. The rest is trapped in the outer layers and can't be used as fuel. If there's hydrogen in the core, you're good. If there's hydrogen outside of the core, can't be used. If it's not in your fuel tank, it's not doing you any good. Massive stars also have more gravity than smaller stars. So they have to burn their hydrogen fuel faster to prevent the star from collapsing. They burn their candle on both ends. Because of their incredible mass, their fusion reactions in the core happen at an incredible rate. Giant stars are kind of fast and furious. They are bright, they live their life, and they die very quickly. When a giant star's fuel runs out, the core collapses catastrophically under the overwhelming force of gravity. And then, boom, supernova. The death of a giant star triggers one of the biggest bangs in the universe. The blast would instantly vaporize nearby planets. But these star deaths are also critical for life. When massive stars die, they release heavy elements they've been making through the course of their lives. And sometimes they even make new ones. And it's these heavier elements that are essential for, for life. We owe our existence to stars that formed billions of years ago. In May of 2018, we spotted evidence of ancient stars creating the stuff of life. We picked up an infrared light signal from a distant galaxy named MACS 1149-JD1. The signal was ionized oxygen. It's been traveling for 13.3 billion years, so the oxygen formed when the universe was very young just 500 million years after the Big Bang. This oxygen formed in the hearts of massive stars. The presence of oxygen tells us that there needed to be massive stars in the early universe. In order to synthesize hydrogen and helium into heavier elements like oxygen, and then explode to eject that oxygen back into the interstellar and intergalactic medium. Extreme pressure in the cores of the stars produces oxygen. And other elements like carbon and nitrogen. Supernova blasts spread these elements across the universe, helping to create new generations of stars. And most importantly, us. If there is one single fact that you should care about in all of science, and this is my favorite fact, 
is that you and I are a consequence of star death. Before you can have life, you need to have the kind of elements out of which life forms. You need carbon, you need nitrogen, you need oxygen. You need the elements that are the backbone to the, the biology that, that, that makes us possible. Where did those elements come from? Well, they came from stars. They came from stars that formed in the early universe before even the sun existed. The huge size of massive stars quickly signs their death warrants. Their explosive ends help create new stars and even life. The fact that you exist at all is because of stars. But probing galaxies across the universe, we've discovered something else. The star apocalypse isn't just killing stars, it's stopping them from ever being born. Star formation is dying, and in fact, it's dying rather quickly. The universe right before our eyes is becoming a darker place. It's running out of fuel, and eventually, no more stars will be made at all. Life on Earth follows a series of regular patterns. Day after day, the sun rises and sets. And stars light up the darkness of the night sky. The reason I got into astronomy to begin with was because the, I grew up in a rural part of the country and the sky was beautiful and dark. You go outside at night and you look up and you can see thousands of stars. But it won't be that way forever. 2016, a network of telescopes across the world measured the energy output of over 200,000 galaxies. They discovered that in the past two billion years, the universe has lost half its brightness. The night sky is getting darker as stars flicker out of existence. About 10 billion years ago, uh, the universe kind of hit its peak and uh, lots of stars were shining. It was an incredibly bright place. But in the last couple billion years, it's, it's really overall become a, a less bright place. The darkening universe isn't just a sign that stars are dying. It seems there's a problem with star birth as well. When we look into the universe's past, what we find is that long ago, stars were forming at a much higher rate. Right now, what we see is that really, stars are dying off faster than they're being born. A Milky Way-type galaxy today produces about seven stars per year. However, 11 billion years ago, a galaxy like our own would have produced 10 times more stars. In the early universe, old stars died and new ones formed in their place from the material left over. It was a cycle that kept the cosmos bright not anymore. It kind of sucks for us. We like a bright universe. We like all this energy and, and life that's vibrating through the universe, um, but that's just not always going to be the case. The universe is already winding down. One of the biggest mysteries in galaxy evolution is figuring out how galaxies stop forming their stars. But we really don't know the answer yet, and it's really important for us to figure out why. Because in the end, stars really equal life. <laughs>